Hello. Um, now I would like to talk about carbonate mineral. So I started by drawing a diagram up here that's in my last video on um, carbonate chemistry. And it shows the proportion of various species of dissolved carbon compounds as a function of pH. Now most natural waters are between pH 6 and 10, um, and uh, at least those that form carbonate minerals. And so um, carbonate minerals have the, cal uh, the one carbon and three oxygens, and calcium carbonate is the most common. That includes calcite and aragonite, which are two different crystal morphs with the uh, same chemistry. So in most cases, carbonate minerals form from the bicarbonate ion because that's the most abundant one in water. So if we look at a calcium carbonate, we have a calcium ion with a 2 plus charge uh, in solution, and that reacts with a carbonate ion to either form the mineral uh, calcite or aragonite, calcium carbonate, uh, and this is a solid plus a proton. And it can dissolve the other direction. So, uh, calcium carbonate or limestone uh, is also travertine or, or common building stones, and acid rain provides protons that drives the reaction to dissolve the minerals and form calcium and bicarbonate ions. Um, if you have a high enough calcium and carbonate ion concentration or activity, it drives the reaction to form the carbonate minerals. Now there's another way we can write this uh, reaction, which involves two bicarbonates, and that shows a very strong connection between carbonate mineral formation and um, carbon dioxide. So we can consider the reaction calcium plus two bicarbonate ions reacting to form the mineral calcium uh, carbonate solid plus to balance this out we have two hydrogens um, and two extra um, uh, three extra oxygens and a carbon so this makes one water and one carbon dioxide. And this will be dissolved. This is obviously liquid. This is a solid, and these are in solution. So the process of carbonate mineral formation or dissolution is very closely tied to the carbon dioxide. Now, plants and photosynthetic bacteria, cyanobacteria and algae, uh, photosynthesize. And they um, often use the carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the water um, if they're aqueous plants. So when you have a situation where the CO2 goes to photosynthesis, you're lowering the concentration of um, components on this side of the equation, and it tends to drive carbonate mineral formation. Now, in the ocean, uh, which has a lot of salt in it, there's enough buffering uh, capacity that photosynthesis tends not to cause the formation of carbonate minerals. The chemistry is very complicated and we're still investigating exactly why um, you see so little carbonate mineral formation with photosynthesis in the ocean. However, in a lake, like Pavilion Lake, uh, that I just spent uh, some time at, in the water has many fewer ions in it, it's fresher water, and there are a lot of bacteria and algae that are removing carbon dioxide from the water, and that's causing mineral uh, precipitation. So when you have carbon dioxide removing from the photosynthesis, you end up with m mineral formation. Okay. In contrast, if you take rainwater with carbon dioxide dissolved in it, and if that falls on carbonate rocks, it tends to dissolve them. It really critically matters in detail how the pH is changing and how the amount of carbon dioxide is changing as to whether you dissolve or um, 
precipitate carbonate minerals. That makes carbonate minerals very interesting um, uh, as a record of, of water chemistry uh, in specific environments and through time. So that's my very brief summary of uh, carbonate mineral uh, formation, and thanks for watching.